A large React application consists of a bunch of methods, components, and third-party libraries. And if we didn't do anything to make those different parts load only when they are needed, a huge bundle or a chunk of JavaScript will be shipped to your users as soon as they open your website, which will affect the performance of your apps significantly. So for example, inside of this app, if we go to inspect and sources, and if we reload this app, you're going to see inside of this static slash JS folder, we are shipped with the huge bundles and the chunks of JavaScript files. So what should we do to avoid this? Yes, the answer is code splitting. Let's open the code splitting in React.js documentation. So if I go and search code splitting over here, you're going to see that this says most React apps will have their files bundled using tools like Webpack, Rollup, or Browserify. Bundling is a process of following imported files and merging them into a single file, a bundle. A bundle can be included on a web page to load the entire app at once. So our React apps use tools like Webpack to efficiently bundle all of our code in a minified format. But this doesn't always guarantee the optimization of performance. So we use something called lazy loading, which is a part of this code splitting process. So if we go down, you're going to see that we get this react.lazy from react.js to lazy load our app, which helps us in code splitting. So let's go on and have a look how we can implement this code splitting into our React projects. So here I've opened the project folder for our Crypto Hunter project. So let me go quickly to the terminal and start our app by typing npm start. So here's our Crypto Hunter project. Now, if you don't know anything about this project, that's completely fine. You can still follow along with this tutorial and optimize your React.js app by using code splitting. Or if you want to go on and follow this complete project, you can check out this video. Link will be in the description below. But if you don't want to follow the complete project, you can go to github.com slash and here inside of the repositories, if you go on and search crypto, you'll find the complete code to this project in this repository. Now, if you see this repo, you will see that there are multiple branches over here. You need to go to Firebase integration and just fork this branch to follow along with this video. Or if you want the code that I'm going to explain in this video, you can find that code in this code splitting implementation branch. Now, before moving forward, what I would like to do is I'm going to go to over here inside of Lighthouse and I'm going to generate a report to compare the before and after result of optimizing our app with code splitting. Okay, so just click on this generate report and let's see how fast is our website right now. Okay, so these are the results that we got. Performance, the 50 number, accessibility 83. So let's see if after optimizing our app, does these result increase? So I'm, I'm just gonna keep this window open like this and I'm gonna open another window. So I'm gonna quickly go to Google and search code splitting. And you're gonna see that we have this first link which will take us to the React documentation. And it's explaining the same thing that I just explained you at the start of this video. So tools like Webpack, Rollup or Browserify help bundle our React.js apps and the code splitting help us to reduce the load of those JS files. So if we come down over here inside of this code splitting, you're going to see that it says as your app grows, your bundle will grow too. So that's why you need to split your code and lazy load your components so that your app performs really, really good. So then if we come down, you're going to see we have this react.lazy. Now what is this? So we don't just import component directly. We use something called react.lazy to lazy load the component. So let me show you in the code. So if I go inside of the SRC inside of the pages in homepage.js, you can see that I have rendered two components over here. First is for banner. The other is for coins table. So this is the banner and this is the coins table component. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on and lazy load the coins table component. So instead of this fragment, I'm just going to add a div over here and I'm going to say const coins table equals and I'll say react dot lazy and inside of this we're going to take this path and we're going to say import and inside of it I'm going to provide that path. So this is how we lazy load a component. So let me remove this line now and let's check it out. 
Okay, so we have another error. A React component suspended while rendering, but no fallback UI was specified. So what does this mean? So this means that this component was lazy loaded. Okay, that's fine. But while this was lazy loading, it should have something to display, right? It shouldn't be just empty. It should display something like loading or, you know, also like a spinner or something like that. So we need to use something called suspense now. So let's go to the documentation and see what suspense is. So, okay, we did just like this, but we need to wrap it with something called this suspense, which comes from React. So, okay, fine. Let's copy this line up and try this out. I'm gonna wrap this and put it inside of over here and let's import suspense from React. Yep, just like that. Save this and let's see if our app works fine. Yep, it does. Let's reload. You're gonna see that there is a loading over here for a split second. I don't know if you can see that or not. Where is that coming from? It's coming from over here. Inside of this fallback, you can give another component for loading. You can give any sort of custom component or stuff like that. I've just given a div with the text of loading. So this is our fallback UI. This UI will be displayed while this component is being lazy loaded. Okay, so you've understood what the basic lazy loading is. We just add this react.lazy and import this component inside of it. And then we provide it a fallback UI by using suspense. But what if while lazy loading, our component fails to load for some reason, then we need to handle that error, right? We need to display some sort of error. So that's why we use something called error boundaries. So let's see what error boundary is all about. So if we go back to our documentation, you're gonna see that next is error boundaries. So to implement error boundaries, we just create a component for our error boundary and we just wrap it on the lazy loaded component. So let's see their example of error boundary. So I'm gonna go and click on this link. And inside of here, we're gonna see that live demo. Okay, let's see the live demo. Hmm. So I can see that they've given us the error boundary example with the class based component. So if you want to go on and understand the class based component, you can go on and understand this error boundary that they have provided. But I'm going to explain you how to create your own error boundaries in a much more easier way than this. So I'm just going to close this up. And I'm going to go and search react error boundary. So this is an NPM package. So let's open this up. Here we go. So it's a simple reusable error boundary component. Awesome. So we don't want to create our own error boundaries and you know, create a lot of hassle. So you just use this package. This is much more simpler than that. So I'm going to copy this and install it in our project. So I'm going to open another terminal and paste it. All right. React error boundary has installed. Let me close this terminal up and I'm going to create an error boundary for this component. So I'm going to go inside of the components folder and create a new file called error boundary.js and inside of this i'm going to create my own error boundary so let's go to the documentation for react error boundary and see how they have told us so okay this creates a function called error fallback and obviously you can give any name to this function and it takes an error and a function to reset that error okay and so this they have created this simple component to display this error okay fine let's let me just copy it up because this is self-explanatory and I'm going to export it. So export default error fallback. Awesome. So again, they have given this something went wrong and just display the error message and a button to reset the error boundary, which I'm going to explain how we're going to provide it that function. And now I'm going to come over here and wrap this in something called error. Oops, error boundary which obviously comes from react error boundary. So just like this. Cool. Now this takes a bunch of props. So let's see. It takes a fallback component, which means whenever the error occurs, it's going to go and display this component, which is this component that we just created over here, this one. And the other thing that it's going to take is on reset, which will contain the logic for resetting the error. And I'm going to come to that later. Don't worry. So, okay. Let me close this and I'm going to provide it fallback component, which is going to be error fallback. Yep. There we go. We have imported this 
and the other thing that it takes is on reset which i'm just gonna keep empty like this cool let's uh, simulate an error probably let's go inside this coin stable component so over here and what i'm gonna do is just above this return statement i'm gonna write if math dot random which generates a random number between 0 and 1 so i'm gonna say if it's more than 0 0.5 then throw the error because obviously it's not going to be more than 0 0.5 every time so sometimes it's gonna throw error and sometimes it won't so let's save this and check it out so yep you see that it threw this error objects are not valid as react child if you meant to render a collection blah 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 and if i refresh it so we're just basically simulating an error over here obviously this is not how the real app works but we're just simulating an error over here to show you what happens if a component while loading throws an error now if i click on this try again it's going to generate a random number every time so yep so this time it generated the number below the 0 0.5 so it displayed us this component so this is how we handle the errors in lazy loading by using error boundaries so let me go over here and inside this on reset function you can write any logic for resetting your error for example in this case i'm just going to write window dot location dot reload i'm just going to reload the app or let's say if there's a particular state that's giving us this error we can reset that state so i think you got my point what i'm trying to say so this is what error boundary is and obviously i would highly recommend you to go and read more about this in the official react documentation this will clear your doubts much much more now let's move further and see we have route based code splitting so what is route based code splitting so inside of our app if we go inside the app.js which is right here we have two pages home page and the coin page and when the app loads the whole js chunk loads both of these pages so that our app is very fast and whenever our app starts it loads the whole chunk of js containing both of these pages but what if we manage to only call the js chunk whenever we go to that particular page right so that is what we want to do so that's why we're going to use route based code splitting so if we go inside of our app and i'm going to go to inspect inside of sources you're gonna see we have this js file right this js folder inside of this we have these bunch of chunks so if i reload our page you're gonna see when our app loads it loads all of these chunks of javascript these huge chunks of javascript but now watch this what's gonna happen so if i go over here and lazy load both of these pages so let me quickly add the react.lazy to this which is going to be just like this and notice one thing this has to go below all of the imports just over here okay let me load lazy as well okay cool it has loaded i believe yep just like that so this has been lazy loaded but we forgot to give it the suspense fallback so we need to wrap this with suspense as well and don't forget to import it from react just like this Oh, why has it imported twice like that? I'm gonna do this. Cool. Now this needs some fallback. So I'm just gonna give the normal uh, div loading. So div and loading. Cool. So this should work. Okay, what's wrong? Cannot fa find the file. Okay, so this is home page now i think it's fine so awesome let's go on and test this out so if we go and check uh, so first of all let me remove this error boundary from over here so um inside of this console table i'm going to comment it out we don't want to throw any error now okay now if we go back to our app and go to the inspect and sources you're going to see that our js files has been splitted to use only the current page and the lazy load the other page so if we go over here you're gonna see our files have been distributed in bunch of chunks so now if we go to the coin page yep you see it loaded the coin page chunks so this is how we have optimized our react.js app successfully now let's go on to the lighthouse and check 
how much improvement did we manage to make so i'm going to generate the report and our previous report must also be opened somewhere yep over here so i'm going to put it here and let's compare both of the reports and there you see so there's a decent increase in the performance obviously i didn't optimize a lot of aspect of our app but i'm sure you can go on and make it much much better so if you see performance was 50 now it's 56 best practices performance okay these these all the things are improved let's go down and you can see it was first loading in 1.8 seconds now it's loading in 1.7 seconds we have reduced our unused javascript and minified as well so yep this is how you do code splitting in react js to improve the performance of our apps so if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video and if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me to ask your doubts or whatever that you want to study from me you can click the join button down below and join the roadside beast membership and thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next video Bye bye